In this question, we are going to review the concepts that we covered with a pulley system when one block pulls something down and the other one gets pulled up. This, of course, has friction along the incline, but now something new. The pulley has a mass and a radius as provided. And so what happens then is it does break up this into a force tension, two, pulling those blocks up, and a force tension, one, pulling it down. Uh, let's consider that in this direction, going around, it will be positive. So we need to write three equations, one for each object in the system here, in order to find this out. So let's go ahead. We're going to an equation A. Equation A will deal with the 10 kilogram box here. Okay, and let's just write that as 98 newtons because we know that 10 times 9.8 is 98 newtons. Okay, so we're going to have an equation here. So what's going on? We have force tension G pulling it up, and then we'll have force gravity X and force friction both opposing that motion up, and that will be what our net force is going to be equal to. So I'm going to start off by saying net force is mass times acceleration, so 10A. It's then equal to force tension 2 minus 98 sine of 30 minus 98 cosine of 30 multiplied by 0 0.10. So where does that equation come from? Well, this is the net force. This is force tension 2. This is force gravity x, and that's force of friction. So that takes care of the first equation. The second equation, let's label that step B, is going to be for this mass here. So what's going on here? We have gravity pulling downwards and force tension up opposing that, and that'll equal the net force acting on it. Okay, and uh, let's look at the gravity force on that. That would be 50 times 9.8, or 490 newtons. So then I'll say 50A is equal to 490 minus force tension. That would be force tension 1. You know, remind you that downwards is positive in this example, and then upwards is going to be negative, because we've chosen this whole way we're going to be our positive direction. And then finally, for question C, uh, we need to consider that this disk here is trying to rotate, but it's trying to be pulled this way, okay, for, from force tension 1, but it's also receiving a force tension 2 backwards in this direction. Okay, so it's going to feel a lag because this guy is trying to pull it down, and this guy is trying to pull this way. And remember, a torque does equal force times radius because the radius would be the uh, distance to the center of rotation. So let's model this very quickly. Let's put a circle over here. Let's make that a little bit bigger, and there's our center of rotation. Okay, and let's take a look at that. This disk is receiving a torque going off in this direction here from force tension 2, and that would be multiplied by the radius. And it's also receiving another torque in this direction because of force tension 1. Maybe not quite drawn straight down there, but you get the idea. And of course, our distance to the point of rotation is right there. Another perpendicular distance was equal to the radius. Now, the net torque between those two must equal I alpha, okay, for this. So let's write that. So force tension 1 will multiply that by a distance of 0 0.40. Now let's put a 1 there. And then we'll go minus a force tension 2 multiplied by 0 0.40. And that has to equal I alpha. The rotating disk. Now we're choosing this direction again to be our positive direction and this direction here to be our negative direction. Okay, so let's substitute in for I. Again, a, a disk we have I equals one half mr squared. Okay, what about A or alpha? So remember A is equal to R alpha. Therefore, alpha is going to be equal to A divided by R. And what do we get then? We're going to get 0 0.40 force tension 1 minus 0 0.40 
force times N2 equals our I, which is going to be 1 half 5 times 0 0.40 squared. Okay, and then we're going to multiply that by A divided by 0 0.40. In our next video, part two, we'll solve the system equations to get force tension one, force tension two, and the acceleration of the, of the